They didn't have a draft when I played. They used to see just a big herd of brothers. And they say, sign all of them because about five stars going to be in there. I always knew from the time I got to the big leagues, the minor leagues, signed the baseball contract, that it was a mirrored society. Whatever goes on in life, it goes on in life and sports. They used to have controversies about the mounds of being too high. Dodger Stadium? Hmm. The Houston Astrodome? Hmm. Park Jerry in Canada? All the parks I just named, those three parks had pitches that were 6'2 to 6'6. And when they come down off that mound, they look like giants throwing down. But now when the umpires go out and check the uh, dimensions, they got a home plate raised up. So when the umpires go back in to dress, the ground crew come out of there and tap it back down. <laughs> I didn't know that the stimulants would enhance your performance because I, I, I always pitched that way. You know, it's, it's, it's like in the game when I was in the game. You know, if Doc's pitching, you know it's high. How high is he? How many milligrams did he, did, he, did he do today? You know, how many milligrams did he burn? You know, that's what we used to say, those who did it. You know, there's, there's some people that when I pitched against them, they say, oh, man, that's about 200 milligrams out there right, right off the bat. 100 for him and 100 for Doc. They out there fired up. Oh, I'm not by myself. Why they cheat? <laughs> Scared because somebody else got their edge on them. It's just that it was part of the game, you know, part of the game, trying to keep the edge uh, and dealing with the fear. The fear of losing, the fear of winning. You know, just the mere fact that you got to stay here now. You got here, now you got to stay. We were all drunk and dreaming. Something was going on with that ball back then. They were playing with the baseball. They had cork in it or who knows what they had. They had a rabbit in it and the stitching was high on, on, the, on the seams of the balls. Some of them didn't ha really have seams. You had to rub them good. And once you got through a few of them, the umpire only, they only rub up two or three dozen. Louis Tion taught me when I was 50 something years old that you can't throw a brand new baseball straight. And if I'd have known that when I was playing, oh, buddy, I'd have been tough. I'd have been out there raising hell. I want new ball. When, when I was wearing the curlers, I had a perm, Superfly. That's what that was. And wearing the curlers on the field, is the it, it, I was defying the club. So I went and got a, uh, a size 10 and a half hat and took the two curlers off of here, 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 and here and you couldn't see them. Perm get wet, it's gonna go straight down. And that's when I, th I started throwing spitball because they, they, the, the sweat off the hair was like spit. You know, when I threw the ball, you could just see the water fly off. I remember one time an umpire called timeout and told the home plate umpire he's throwing spitball. Cause that umpire was one that was there when I first came up in like 68. See, he, he knew, I, the umpire knew I threw sinker balls. The, the home plate umpire told the, the, the other umpire who was a rookie there named Frank Pulley to get back to third base and shut up. Doc is throwing a good sinker today. He, he had seniority over the guy that was calling timeout. <laughs> but that's what the, uh, the curlers did for me. I did it my way. I did it my way, you know. <laughs>